Good day, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Squad Invite Secondary School Online Chemistry Class. I am Solomon, your online chemistry teacher. Now, this was the assignment, the first question of the last class. And here is the solution to the first question. And our class today will be talking about sulfur foxide, also known as SO2. Now, that's sulfur foxide, we are going to talk about its occurrence in nature, preparation, physical properties, and chemical properties. And after that, we are going to discuss how we can test for sulfur foxide in the laboratory and some important uses of sulfur foxide. Now, sulfur foxide is usually present in volcanic gases and in water of certain sulfur springs. Now, also, coal contains sulfur in combined form. Now, when coal is being combusted, it produces sulfur four oxide. Now, the presence of substantial amount of sulfur four oxide in the atmosphere is one of the major causes of acid rain. Because when sulfur four oxide dissolves in water, it produces an acidic, it produces an acidic solution. So, the the water which is then acidified, which has turned to acid, falls as rain. Now, preparation of sulfur 4 OZ. Sulfur 4 OZ is prepared industrially by burning sulfur or metallic sulfur in oxygen or air. Now, the gas is usually sold in the, in the liquid form under pressure. That means after production, after the combustion, the gas is compressed to its liquid state under pressure. Now in the laboratory, it is readily generated by eating sodium or potassium trisulfate 6 with tetrasulfate 6 acid or hydrochloric acid. And here is the equation. And this is sodium trisulfate 4, sorry, sodium trisulfate 4, that's with HCl, that's hydrochloric acid, to produce sodium chloride, water molecular, the sulfur 4, Oxide gas and the gas is obtained by eating. The gas can also be obtained by eating concentrated tetrasulfate with copper. And this is a redox reaction in which the copper reacting with concentrated tetrasulfate cis acid to produce Cu SO4. This is supposed to be Cu SO4. Cu SO4 that's copper 2 tetrasulfate cis plus 2 H2O plus SO2. Please take note this is supposed to be Cu. SO4. Now, if you check the oxidation number of copper here, it has been increased from zero. And if you check it here, CuSO4. Please let's take note of that. This is supposed to be CuSO4. CuSO4. The oxidation number of copper here would already be uh, plus two here. From zero to plus two. That's oxidation. And so far, here has reduced from plus six to plus four, that's reduction. So this is a redox reaction. Now, physical property of sulfur four oxide. Now, sulfur four oxide is a colorless and a poisonous gas with a very irritating smell, like that of burning marshes. Now, it is very soluble in water, forming trisulfate six acid, trisulfate four acid, H2, SO3. Hence, sulfur four oxide is an acid anhydride. I hope you all know the name of acid anhydride. Acid anhydride are compounds that dissolve in water to produce acid. An example is CO2 and NO2. Also have SO3 also. Now, so four oxide is 2.5 times denser than it. Now, from this we can see that so for four oxide can be prepared by the downward delivery method, which is also known as the upward displacement method because it is heavier than air. Now, to the chemical property of sulfur four oxide. Now, sulfur four oxide behaves as an acid when in water. So, it reacts with alkalis to form a normal salt, trisulfate four salt. Now, this aqueous sodium hydroxide, which is the alkali, the, an, which is an alkali, reacting with SO2 to give you Na2SO3, which is sodium trisulfate four salt, and also forming some water molecule. This is the neutralization. Reaction. D is a neutralization reaction. Now, another reaction that we have is the direct combination. Now, SO2, so suppose that we have with oxygen in the presence of catalyst to produce SO3, which is so for 6 oxide. And the reaction is a 
reversible reaction. That means the reaction, the reaction to favor the forward reaction, you have some conditions to favor the forward reaction, and also have some conditions to favor the backward reaction. And please take note, the reaction is an exothermic reaction. That means, since it's an exothermic reaction, increase in pressure will favor the forward reaction and decrease in temperature will favor the backward reaction. The yeah, decrease in temperature will favor the forward reaction also. But increase in temperature will favor the backward reaction and decrease in pressure will favor the backward reaction. Now, with certain metallic oxides, for example, lead 4 oxide, sulfur 4 oxide, we have to form tetrazofit, six sorts of metal of metal of metallic oxide. Now, this lead oxide, for example, lead 4 oxide, PbO2, reacting with SO2, the sulfur 4 oxide, to produce PbSO4, which is lead 2 tetrazofit, six sorts. Now, as a reducing agent, now in our last class, I said hydrogen sulfide reacts with sulfur 4 oxide to form food, form a deposit of sulfur. I said hydrogen sulfide behaves as, as a reducing agent when it reacts with sulfur, but sulfur 4 oxide. But sulfur 4 oxide is normally a reducing agent. But when it comes in contact with hydrogen sulfide, which is H2S, it behaves as an oxidizing agent. Remember that, but sulfur four oxide is a is naturally a reducing agent. Now, SO four is a strong reducing agent in the presence of water. Now, in the presence of water, please take note that in the presence of water, that is when hydrogen sulfur four oxide can behave as a reducing agent in the presence of water. Water must be present for any reaction to take place. Now, with tetrasomanganate seven, that's KMnO four. So for four of that decolorize acidified potassium tetrazomaganate seven by reducing it. And also it is being oxidized to hydrogen tetrazosulfate six. It is being oxidized to hydrogen tetrazosulfate six H2 SO4. Please let's take note of that. D is an error. This should be this should be hydrogen tetrazosulfate cis, not hydrogen, not tetrazosulfate cis oxide. Should be hydrogen tetrazosulfate six. Please let's take note. Now this is KMnO4. We are seeing with SO2 in the presence of water. Please let's take note to produce potassium tetrazosulfate cis and reducing the KMnO4 to MnSO4. And also the SO2 is being oxidized to hydrogen tetrasulfate cis, that's the sulfuric acid, tetrasulfate cis acid. But please take note that the acid producer will be the dilute form of the acid. Please take note of that. The acid produced will be the dilute form of the tetrasulfate cis acid. Now please don't forget this should be tetrasulfate cis acid or hydrogen tetrasulfate cis, not tetrasulfate cis oxide. Please take note of that. Now with tetrasulfate five acid, so for four oxide reduces concentrated trazonitrate five acid to liberate reddish brown of nitrogen four oxide, and it is then oxidized to hydrogen tetraoxosulfate six. And this is the equation of the reaction. Now this is HNO3 reacting with SO2 to form the NO2. NO2 is being liberated. That shows that HNO3 is reduced to NO2. If you check the oxidation number of nitrogen, you see that. You see that the oxidation number of nitrogen has reduced from plus five year from plus five year to plus four, which shows what reduction and the oxidation number of sulfur has increased from plus six to plus, from plus four in SO2 to plus six in H2 SO4. Now SO2 has Still as a reducing agent with ion three chloride. Now so for four oxide reduces brown ion three chloride to a green solution of ion two chloride. And this is the equation of reaction FeCl3 plus SO2 in the presence of what water. Please let's take note of that. In the presence of water to form FeCl2, which is a green solution, a dirty green solution. Now and it is oxidized to H2SO4. Please take note of that. SO2 is oxidized to H2SO4 whenever it is being 
when is why it's based as a reducing agent. Now with halogens, so for four that reduces color solution of halogens to form the hydrogen compound. For example, chlorine, it reduces chlorine gas to form the hydrogen chloride gas or the, the hydrochloric acid. Now if you check the oxidation number of chlorine here, oxidation number of chlorine is zero, but here the oxidation number of chlorine is minus one. So chlorine is being reduced from zero to minus one. Why SO2? It's been as so far here is has increased from plus four to plus six. Yeah, and please take note SO2 is oxidized to H2SO4. Now, as an oxidizing agent, now this is the only time SO2 behaves as an oxidizing agent with H2S, and I've discussed this in our last lecture on the hydrogen sulfide the properties, of, chemical properties of hydrogen sulfide. SO2 is reduced. To sulfur, why H2S is also oxidized to sulfur. Now, as a bleaching agent, now under our discussion under halogen, the halogen formula, we talked that we talked about chlorine as a bleaching agent. Now, as we are talking about SO2 as a bleaching agent. Now, the difference between chlorine as a bleaching agent and SO2 as a bleaching agent is that chlorine. This is by oxidation Y, SO2, this is by reduction. Now, a solution of sulfur so oxide, which is SO2 in water, bleaches both natural and artificial dye. And in the presence of water, please take note the bleaching action of chlorine, of both chlorine and SO2, takes place in the presence of water. It forms triazosulfate cis acid, that's H2SO3, which then donates electron to the dye and become oxidized towards the trisulfate cis acid. That means the SO2 reacts with water to form trisulfate 4 acid, which is H2SO3. Then the H2SO3 is then oxidized by donating electron. You know, reduction is gaining electron, while oxidation is losing electron. Now, the H2SO3, which is trisulfate cis acid, trisulfate 4 acid, loses electron to the dye and is then oxidized to what? Tetrasulfate cis acid, which is H2SO4. Now, in the process, the dye is what reduced to a colorless solution, a colorless compound, which is the bleached dye. Hope, I, I hope I'll be able to pass something across to you guys under the bleaching action of the bleaching, bleaching action of SO2. Now, how do we test for SO2 in the lab? Now, we can test. For SO2 in the lab, using uh, the bleaching action, its bleaching action, and its action on oxidizing agents. Now I know we've discussed these two in our chemical properties. I want you guys to visit it, visit it again. Now also, but here we are using under its bleaching action, under its oxidizing action, its reducing action, its reducing property. We are using case to CO2, which is potassium hepta ozodichromate 7 solution. Now, with SO2, potassium hepta ozodichromate 7 will change from orange to green. Please take note of that. Potassium hepta ozodichromate 7, which is K2 CR2 O7, will change from orange to green. That means it's reduced by, by, the, by SO2. By so for four oxides from orange to green. Why the purple solution of potassium tetrazomagnesium become colored from purple to color? We'll talk about that. Now, uses of sulfur four oxide. A sulfur four oxide is used for the manufacturing of trisulfate cis acid. Trisulfate cis acid. This should be trisulfate four as a solid trisulfate four acid or hydrogen trisulfate four. And it's also used as a germicide, germicide and also as a fumigant. And it's also used to bleach wool, silk, and to decolorize crude sugar. And these are just some uses. We also have other uses of sulfur four oxide. It is very important. Also, sulfur four oxide is very important. It is very important in the cotton process. We'll discuss the cotton process when we are talking about H2SO4. That was hydrogen tetrasulfate cis acid. Now, these are some practice questions for you guys. Now, I want you guys to 
like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have anything for us, you can visit us at www.scholarsuniversitysecondaryschool.com or you can call or message or send or, or message whether WhatsApp or normal phone message. 08033942989. Now, thank you for watching this edition of Scholars Universal Secondary School Online Chemistry Class. We we'll meet again in the next class. Thank you.